Yo, still bills, what's the dish? Ew, man, I just dropped my baby off at the daycare, heading to the plantation to start this motherfucking week off. But yo, peep game, man. We got to talk. I didn't see the fight last night. You know, y'all, everybody knows how I, my reserves as, as it pertains to Jake Paul is. I can't get jiggy with dude. I just can't, man. I've, um... I watched the face off because I really adored how Tyron Woodley banged on him in the face off. I, I loved that, you dig? I loved how he was, you know, like nigga, use a lane, bro. Use a character. You playing a, 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 you acting out a role and all that. This is role play to you. Like, who in your neighborhood where you grew up at dresses the way you dresses, wearing five chains like you Nipsey Hustle? You dig? That ain't you. I use a goofy, use a lane. Use a lane. He banged on him. He banged on him hard. He, he banged on him hard in the face off and just kind of let him know. And to the point where Jake Paul had nothing to say. I don't think he's that witty of a dude anyway. I don't think them catch is witty like that. I think they're elite level trolls, but it takes a certain type of energy to neutralize a troll. And Tyron came with the with that elite level energy he came with that energy to let him know that nah homie you not you you no you ain't none of that you dig like it just goes to show just the gap in culture and this i, I really have a disdain for motherfuckers who kind of merge over into this culture or whatever merge over into this lane just because it's so popularized right now especially with you know, I'm, I'm not I'm not I'm not too favorable of white people, you know, carry on a certain type of persona. I'm not. I'm I'm really not, man. Even, you know, Eminem is one of my favorite rappers ever, man. But I'm just I'm not too I'm not too I'm not too fond of it. And even with him, it wasn't an overt level of nigga shit that he tried to, you know, that he tried to capitalize on. He was he just happened to be so, you know, a skilled MC. One of the skill, most skilled to ever do it. But, you know, it was a certain, he didn't rap, he, he didn't talk with a certain type of vernacular and tone in his speech. He don't talk like a, you know, it's not like Paul Wall, Bubba Sparks, or, you know, how they would just OD with the, with the you know, with the black scent. I'm, I'm just, I'm not a fan of it, man. I'm, I'm not a fan with it. The biggest issue, we, we talk like this because of y'all. And we got ridiculed for talking like this at a point in time, just for y'all to all, well, it's acceptable now to merge over into this lane. And now all of a sudden y'all doing, a, I'm not a fan of it. So when I see a lot of motherfuckers, you know, carrying on the persona, that shit just, it, it, it does bother me. Even though it is white boys who come from the hood, it's just, I'm just like, uh. but with him, you dig, it's just, you know, just, uh, I'm just, I'm not a fan of it, man. I'm not, a, I'm not that big of a fan of it. And maybe he doesn't, maybe I'm just seeing with just, you know, how he dresses and everything and. Maybe I'm just seeing that and I'm, you know, I'm making a snap decision about him and that's actually not how he talks. I don't know. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, let me know I'm wrong. But it's just, I, I just I just don't dig the dude. I just don't dig the dude. And I really loved how Tyron Willie banged on him. And, you know, just when he's talking, he's making Joe all, oh, you're a 40-year-old rapper. Like, you're a 40, you got a gun, you got a knife, all that bullshit. Like, what do you talk like? Because he comes from a certain demographic, he's supposed to illegal carry some fucking firearms and you know deadly weapons and shit like that like just just a just a complete separation of just just a gap in understanding of background and it's corny it's corny as fuck you know you're a 40 year old rapper like nigga it's it's dudes it's 50 year olds who are still going to these radio stations and dropping freestyles over beats like what are you talking about rap has no age limit you could be a 70-year-old rapper. If you spitting, you spitting. And I don't think he's trying to make a career of it. He's just, like he said, man, like it's no, you know, my age hinders me from being able to speak on experience that I know through art. Like, what are you talking about? You dig it? You know how he banged on dude? He told dude, how you, man, there ain't no, I bet you nobody in my camp would have talked to you and talked to Miss Paul like that. I bet you. I bet you wouldn't nobody talk to Miss Paul like that in my camp. Because I'd check you. Like, you ain't got nobody in your camp. No thorough dudes to really check you on shit. You dig? And you can tell, man. A lot of these cats, they just, they're long for the ride. You know, they, um, 
they're long for the ride. The Paul brothers come from wealth, so shit, you fucking with me? All right, bet that, bet that, bet that. I don't. I want to go to Miami. I want to go here. I want to go there. You gotta have a rapport with somebody to really, you know, be in a position where you can check them on they wrongdoing and not be exiled from their circle because they respect you. And I don't think they have a rapport like either that or they just as goofy as Jake Paul is. So I really appreciated how he banged on him, man, in the in the face off, man, and with the whole oh, Ferguson, Missouri. That sounds tough. As if Ferguson, Missouri isn't the epicenter of what has took place and what we've been crying and raving about in this country in black America for the past six, seven years. At this peak, at, at, this peak, at, at a fever pitch level. Once again, it just goes to show how far separated we are or how far he is, you know, how far he is just with the, from within the confines of black culture and society. Bro, it's just non-existent with him. So I loved how he banged on him. I loved it. And you know what else I love? The fact that he went seven rounds with a dude or eight rounds with a dude with limited boxing experience. And you are a dude who boxes. You primarily train on the sport. I had you knocking Tyron out. I had you knocking him out. Honestly. I, I did. And for you to go the distance with him. Now I'm seeing people say, oh, you know, they're trying to justify it. They're trying to justify it in um in the sense of uh all oh, well all boxers start with bums. They start, you know, they fight, you know, they start with meager competition, yeah, to get them the proper experience. They do. But they're boxers at the end of the day. They're boxers. They have a gas tank. They know how they know how to slip the shots. They know how to punish you for missing the shot. Oh, well, they know how to punish you when they slip the shots. It's, it's, a, it's a certain technique that they acquired over years of practice as opposed to a Tyron Woodley who's a newcomer to the sport. And that's another thing he said. You're not one of us, bro. Like, you're not one of us. You're not invited. He was like, what do you mean what I'm not invited? You're combat sports, bro. You was not one of us. You're not one of us. You're not. I love that. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. So I commend Tyron Woodley. I might even go watch the fight now, now that I know he made it the whole eight rounds. I love it. The thing is this, man, um, he shouldn't have went eight rounds with no dude who does mixed martial arts and you're professing to be a, a professional boxer. You shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have done that. You talking about, yeah, uh, he, it's not going past two, round, two rounds max and all that. He exceeded that two rounds by six. I'm just saying, man, like, this is getting corny, dude. Like, like I said before, man, the Paul brothers can fight. Like, I'm not saying they can't fight, but for them to profess to be in professional fighters is where it, that shit bothers me, because that's not what they are. That's not what they are. You show, it showed, last night showed what it meant to be a professional fighter. Somebody who can go in there and not even be a practitioner in the, uh, the, 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 the sport that he's competing in for him to go a full eight with you and he has limited boxing experience that says a lot about him and you that says a hell of a lot that says a hell of a lot he went in there and survived and allegedly won around i seen the highlights i seen some of it and he got he landed he landed he don't he damn near knocked you through the ropes in like the second round that says a lot about him, and it says a lot about you as well. Y'all can bang, but at a level to claim to, to claim that you're a professional, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And it's the semantics that you keep playing with this shit, man. It's the semantics. It's all well, 
I'm three and zero against Nate Robinson, Ben Askers, Askren, or whatever his name is, and now Tyron Whitley, and you knocked them other two out. And the minute you got in there with a competent striker, you went the distance. So now, when are you gonna start fighting boxers? The real shit you said in that face-off was you're trying to create a union for the box. I, I can respect some shit like that, man. I can respect that. You wanting to get these greedy-ass promoters out of the way, I can respect some shit like that. I real life can respect that, man. But it, it also gets to a point where it's like, all right, my nigga, like, really? Why can't you just do that? Why has it got to be all this extra shit? This goofy shit? You are talking about you're a professional fighter and you're not fighting for professional boxers. It's always it's a it's a it's a it's an asterisk to it. And the fact and there's people who are really defending you and your claims to being a professional. And that's just it's it's bullshit. It's bullshit. It's cool to be a celebrity for that. Nobody you can already you can already fight. Why can't you just have celebrity, just say, yeah, I just, you know, I do celebrity boxing, whatever you did. Like, I'm not a professional and still have a certain level of humbleness about you. Why has it got to be all this extra shit? And the fact that more and more and more and more people are coming over into this lane and somewhat muddy in the water is just corny, man. It's just corny. Seeing like just one of his homies out of his camp is talking about, oh yeah, you know I'm about to be a professional boxer. But how? You dudes can fight, y'all can y'all can box, but professional? No. When you talking about, yeah, man, I'll be ready for Canelo. What are you talking? What makes you think that? You think Tyron Willie would have made it out of the first or the second round with a Canelo Alvarez, and you're towering over him and naturally bigger? Could you imagine yourself up there with a a a a, a, a Breedis or anybody or a, a Coley or anything like that as a cruiserweight? I'm just saying, man. Like this shit is just getting corny, man. And everybody is eating it up because everybody wants, you know, everybody wants to be entertained, no matter how goofy it is. That shit is lame, man. That shit is corny, all oh, you you a professional boxer. Like, come on, man. No, you not. <laughs> I consider you a boxer, because I don't think you need to be a pro in order to be labeled a boxer. Yeah, I, I think you're a boxer. I think you, you and your brother are boxers because y'all have the fundamentals of the sport. Y'all know how to fight. But on a amateur level. Like if you was in here up here in my city, you would be at my gym. You wouldn't be at B and B. Where other, you know, where camp, where Javante Davis camp has come down and got work in with the with the Crawford camp, you wouldn't be in that. You wouldn't be over there with them because you be in a crock pool. Even at my gym, you'd be at a crock pool with them youngins at my gym. So I just, I just think that shit is corny, man. And the fact that you went eight of, with a dude who has no box with limited very limited boxing experience that says a lot about you that you really need to humble yourself i just i'm not i'm not a fan of the dog and pony show man like get the fuck out of here there's no reason why daniel dubois should be fucking on an undercard to you the undercard a dude who's a possible mandatory for a world champ for a world uh, for a world championship belt is on the undercard for a Jake Paul. That is blasphemous, man. That is blasphemous. That is, and you're gonna continue to do this shit for I don't know how many years. I don't know. You, you. I mean, you're young too, so you can do this until you my age. That's a decade plus. That's a decade plus. Mario Lopez gets in the gym and spars with Canelo, and then Mario Lopez is a boxer. He can scrap. 
But he's a dude who just likes to be around. You know, all right, cool. I know I can defend myself. I can handle my own. I'm good. He can wrestle and everything, but he ain't trying to step in between them ropes and really get in it. Like, no. No. I respect his opinion on this subject because he's actually walked through certain fires. Matter of fact, why don't you go run that shit with him? Why don't you go run that with him? This shit is just getting out of hand, dog, with the with the with the with the gimmicks and shit, man. That shit is lame. That shit is drag out lame, man. I, like I just I'm just like, yo, and everybody is eating this shit up because you know all Instagram, social media, that shit is the devil, man. That shit is the devil. The fact that it would be anybody considering you a professional is asinine. It's not a shot at your character, that's just a fact. Professional boxers should never come out of your mouth, man. They shouldn't even run in conjunction with each other while you're forming a sentence. And it just and it shows. A professional fighter last night went in there and went the distance with you, and he's not even a practitioner of the sport that y'all was competing in. That says a lot about you. That says a lot about you. A lot. A lot. And that's not a good thing. Be humble, man. Be humble. Just stay on the sidelines. You can claim the status of a boxer. I don't have a problem with that because I think you're a boxer. But a professional boxer, I have an issue with. You cannot claim that. You can't. That is blasphemous for you to sit there and claim that. You're a professional boxer. And you went the distance with Tyron Woodley. Salute to Tyron Woodley. And this ain't a shot at my man. Nothing like that. I've been watching highlights of Tyron for a minute now, man. Um, I fucks with dude. I fucks with him. So salute to you on going the distance with this dude, with this buster. <laughs> salute to you. I loved it. I loved seeing, I, I love waking up and hearing that you ain't get stretched out. Because I thought he was going to go in there and outline you in chalk, and he didn't. So because you didn't, I fuck with you even more for that. It's a testament to who you are. A real combat competitor at the highest level. His competitive nature and his fervor as being a, just a professional, a solid, genuine professional in combat sports showed and highlighted vibrantly last night. The fact that he was able to go in there and go the distance with a dude whose profession to be... Professing to be a professional boxer and you're a mixed martial artist. That says a lot. Salute to Tyron Woolley. I'll fuck with you, my nigga. Stand up, Ferguson, Missouri. Peace.